Have you ever noticed how music can make you feel different things? Some music makes you feel joyful and energetic, like you need to get up and dance. Some can make you feel sad, even make you cry. Other music might make you feel calm or hopeful. Music can remind you of the things that happened a long time ago, or of people you love, and make you feel like they're right there. But for some people, music doesn't just change the way they feel, it changes their entire life. Louis Armstrong didn't start out with many advantages in life. Born in 1901 in New Orleans, Louisiana, his family was extremely poor, and their neighborhood was so dangerous it was nicknamed the Battlefield. I also wanted to mention here that I've always called him Louis Armstrong, and many, if not most people, do now and at the time of his life. But when we did our research, we learned that he preferred being called Louis. So whether you call him Louis or Louis, you can decide. But for our episode, we decided to call him Louis. His father left the family when he was a baby. At different times, Louis lived with his mother and grandmother and had to support his family by doing odd jobs, even as a small child. But Louis did have something special. He had a horn and a voice, and he could make music with both. He would often hear music coming from the clubs and dance halls of New Orleans. He learned to sing some of the songs that wafted out into the warm night air, and even play some of them on a beat-up old tin horn. As a child, he organized a quartet with his friends and sang on street corners for coins. Some people think this is how he got the name Satchmo, which would stay with him all his life. The story goes that when passersby tossed coins on the sidewalk, Lewis would snatch them up and put them in his cheeks so that the older boys couldn't steal them. He was using his mouth like a satchel or bag, which led his friends to start calling him Satchel Mouth, then Satchmo for short. There are many stories about how Lewis got his first real horn, many of which he told himself. One of the best known involves a family he worked for. At age seven, Lewis went to work for the Karnofskys, a Jewish family from Lithuania who ran a junkyard. The Karnofsky family treated Lewis like family, sharing meals with him and treating him with kindness. Lewis helped them deliver coal and collect junk. Sometimes he would play his tin horn to attract business. Even though Lewis managed to get tunes out of his horn, it was really just a toy. He longed for a real horn. Knowing how much Lewis loved to play, the Karnofskys lent him money to buy his first real cornet, which is like a smaller version of a trumpet. For the rest of his life, Lewis wore a Star of David, a Jewish symbol, on a necklace in honor of the family. Unfortunately, getting the cornet wasn't a ticket out of Lewis's hard life. When he was 12, Lewis took out his stepfather's gun on New Year's Eve and shot it into the air. This was a common thing to do at celebrations in the past. No one was hurt, but Lewis was arrested. He was sentenced to spend two years in the Waif's home for boys. Waif is an old-fashioned word for a child who is unhealthy or uncared for. But the home was closer to being a prison than a real home. There were no mattresses to sleep on, meals were usually bread and molasses, and discipline was harsh. But at the school there was one good thing. There was music. There was a band and a music teacher, Peter Davis, who came every week to teach music and conduct rehearsals. Davis taught Lewis to play the cornet, and then the trumpet. Eventually he made Lewis the band's leader. Lewis was released from the Waif's home after two years. He could play very well now, and he started performing in clubs and on riverboats as part of a band. He got to meet other musicians, including Joe Oliver, often called King Oliver. King Oliver was the best cornet player in New Orleans, and Lewis idolized him. And then he began to take lessons with Oliver. In 1922, Oliver asked Lewis to join his band, the Creole Jazz Band. They set off for Chicago, where they performed in clubs and made records. By now, Lewis was becoming famous in his own right, and left Oliver's band in 1924 in search of new opportunities. He moved to New York City, and there he worked with many of the most famous jazz musicians of the time, and formed his own band, The Hot Five, within a few years. 
Along the way, Lewis developed his own unique style of playing and singing. At the time, most jazz was played in groups, but Lewis would improvise amazing solos in the middle of his songs. Improvising means to make up something as you go along, and it isn't easy to do it well. But Lewis was one of the best. This is part of what made his music so new and exciting to listen to, and it would change jazz forever. Lewis also continued to sing, in addition to playing the horn. He became known for his unusual singing voice, which was deep and gravelly. He was one of the first performers to popularize scat singing in his 1920s hit, Heebie Jeebies. This technique involved singing improvised made-up syllables like dee dop a dee and would become very common in jazz. In 1943, Lewis moved back to New York and settled in Queens with his wife, Lucille. He would live there for the rest of his life. But even though he had settled in one city, Lewis's career was far from winding down. He continued recording, performing, and making movies for nearly three more decades. Sometimes he would play more than 300 shows per year. He was internationally famous by this time, and popular with both black and white audiences at a time when much of the United States was still segregated by race. Some civil rights activists were critical of Lewis because they thought he wasn't a strong enough supporter of civil rights for black Americans. Lewis didn't like to get involved in politics, though, and tried to keep a positive, happy outlook on life. But he understood that big changes needed to happen and he did eventually speak out against how the government handled school integration, saying that it hadn't done enough to protect black students trying to go to schools that had been previously all white. Lewis's career kept him busy throughout the 1950s and 60s. His single, Hello Dolly, recorded in 1964, pushed the Beatles out of the number one spot on the Hot 100 chart where they'd been for weeks. It was the best-selling record of his career. He made more than 30 movies with people like Gene Kelly, Frank Sinatra, and Barbara Streisand, and worked with many famous jazz musicians, such as Duke Ellington, Ella Fitzgerald, and Bing Crosby. Even though he loved playing music, the trumpet can be hard on a player's mouth. Lewis developed health problems, some of which were related to his playing when he was in his 60s. He had to quit playing altogether at times, but he always went back to his horn. The last time he went against the advice of his doctors, he said, My whole life, my whole soul, my whole spirit is to blow that horn. That was in 1971, and Lewis's health was deteriorating. He played his last concert just a few months before he passed away, peacefully in his sleep. Lewis recorded his last major hit single, what a Wonderful World in 1967. If you know one Louis Armstrong song, it's probably this one. In it, he sings about all the beautiful things in the world. Trees of green, rainbows, blue skies, and friends. He ends by singing, I hear babies cry, I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I don't know about you, but this song and Lewis's story make me feel hopeful. Lewis Armstrong started his life having almost nothing and lived through a lot of hardships early on, but he found something, music, that he excelled at and that he loved doing. Lewis shared his gifts with everyone. He entertained the rich and famous, but also played his horn for neighborhood kids on the stoop of his house in New York. His contributions to jazz changed music forever. Just as important, his music inspired millions of people around the world to see just what a wonderful world it is.